to Morning Manor. This is Pastor Paul, and we're so excited that you decided to join us on today for a word from the Lord. Let us bow our heads for prayer. God of mercy, God of grace, we bless you. We thank you for this morning's rising. Thank you for covering us all night long. And somehow early this morning, you touched us with your finger of love and our eyes flew wide open and to behold this new day. And we acknowledge this is the day that you've made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Give us ears to hear that which you prepared for us. In Jesus name we pray, amen. Okay, we are in the book, the gospel of Matthew chapter number five. We began on last week talking about you are the salt of the earth. And we're going to pick up again in Matthew 5, verse 14. We shared on last time uh, that you have been called, we believers have been called to be both salt and light. So let's look at verse 14, Matthew chapter 5, and let's read down to verse 16. You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men. Let me read that again. Let your light shine so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You are not only salt, and we mentioned on last time that salt is a preserving agent. It is a seasoning agent. Salt gives flavor as well as preserves, and it is our job and understanding that we must maintain our saltiness, our distinctiveness as the children of God. But then uh, the, the gospel writer Matthew says, not only are you salt that's supposed to flavor and preserve this dying lost world, but you are also the light of the world. And the function of light is to dispel darkness. Uh, darkness and light cannot occupy the same space. And so as believers, as children of God, we really are children of light. I love what John said. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all our sins. You are the light of the world. And light represents enlightenment. It represents knowledge. It represents um, wisdom. And so our job as believers, we are to share and give knowledge, put light upon the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are to be the light of the world. When things are not as bright as they need to be, we bring in the light of God's word. We are to maintain, yes, a personal holiness. That's important. Uh, but we also have to be in touch with the lives of everyone Who's around us? We are to be impact makers. We need to make a positive impact on the lives of people we come into contact with. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. I, I think about that, that scripture, and I think about when I'm traveling, and my family and I are traveling, and we're going into a city. It's late at night, and we, we, we've traveled through the highways, and there are not, there's not a lot of scenery. But way in the distance, 
you can see the lights of the city. The closer you get, the brighter the lights get. And if that city has some type of elevation, you can see the city from a great distance. And God is saying to us, if we are the light of the world, we should illuminate as if we are a city. But we're not any kind of city. We are an elevated city that's on the hill. And we, our light is so bright that it is not hidden from those who need to see it. It is very important to know that once you are saved and you are now a part of the family of God, you have to receive your new position as a position that requires boldness. We have too many timid, weak Christians who are afraid to let others know that we belong to God. Let's read on. Verse 15. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a bushel. The King James said bushel, but the new King James said you put your light under a basket. But you put your light on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. What, what house is this scripture talking about? Uh, our house, the scripture deals with those who are in our circle of influence. When you uh, enter a room, there should be something so uniquely about you that all who see you, they're able to see the light of God's presence on you. They can see that there's an anointing on you. They can see that God dwells within you by his Holy Spirit. And, and so many people who belong to God are afraid to let others know that we are a child of the Most High God. And it doesn't take a lot to let people see God in you. If you just be yourself, if you have been in contact with God, if you have been moving under the anointing of God, it won't take long for people to know you are his child. And so you don't take your light, hide it under a basket, and it only lights the basket. It's not making an impact. It's not lighting up the, the circle. It's not lighting up a large area, but we should be so bright and so illuminated because of our relationship with God that when people see us, they should see God. That's an old little song we sing in church. We learned in Vacation Bible School, but that song is so powerful today. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. But that's a great verse. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. And in the old sense, I'm not going to make it shine. I'm going to let it shine. So listen, if you put your light, your spiritual anointing, and you elevate it, and you let God do what God does through you, it will light up the whole atmosphere because you are there. Look at verse number 16. Let your light so shine. Let your light shine. Listen, you don't have to be the life of the party in order to be noticed. You don't have to be the loudest person in worship. You don't have to be the loudest person in Bible study in order to be noticed. But the Bible says in verse 16, let your light so shine. Why? Before men, before people, that they will see your good works. So if you let it shine, you'll be noticed. If you let it shine, others will know that you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. Uh, with, with so much going on in our country, in our culture, in this society, in this world, we need some light bearers. We need some Christians who are able to stand and stand tall 
and stand boldly and stand up for what is right and for what is good. With all of these dangers, and I mentioned some weeks ago, yes, we are living in the last days. Yes, we are living in perilous times. We are called to be salt and light. Go back to verse 16, Matthew 5. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Your good works. You know, you know the problem is, uh, in many of, around many of us, is that we are so busy talking, but we're not working. And so this text tells us this. Don't talk about it. Be about it. That they may see your good works. And what happens when people see your good works, because they're not really your works. They are good works because they come from the Lord. They see your good works and they will glorify your Father who is in heaven. They will give God glory for the light that's in you. They will give God glory for the good things you are doing, the good works you are doing. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So what, is, what are we saying? We are to live as people of blessings. Why? Why do we live as people of blessings? We live as people of blessings because we are people who are both salt and light. We are light and we're salt in the workplace, in our homes, in our communities, and ultimately in this nation and the world. So as you leave home today and go about your business, turn up your light. Let it shine. Raise it high. Stand it tall. And at the end of time, at the end of your day, it's really not about you or I, but the world will see your good works and glorify your Father 